people have asked me this question a lot. How do I win games? How do I survive the final 10? And the truth is, I can't teach you how to win games, but I can give you best practices that if you continue to use them on a regular basis, you will see yourself place higher and higher until you start eventually winning more often. The biggest thing you need to understand from the beginning that I can offer the least amount of guidance on is your mindset. It's normal to get a bit nervous and a bit jittery being in the final 10. A lot of people tell me that they do, so you're not alone if you do. I did for the first several times that I played pubs. It's a feeling you'll keep forever and you'll have to learn how to deal with it or you will eventually get rid of it. Either way, everybody has different coping mechanisms and everybody has different ways of dealing with it. Once you figure that out for yourself, learn to push this to the side. You need to remember, it's just one game. You can always go play another round of Battlegrounds. There are a million second chances in this game. Not in the particular round you're playing, but in the game in general. So don't fuck up. With that out of the way, let's actually get started on the tips that I can teach you and tell you about that you can use to apply to the game. Awareness. I see so many people tunnel vision during the final 10, focusing on one person or one specific area because they saw somebody or they heard shots. It's not just you versus one other guy, and it's not just you on one single isolated part of the map. It's that entire circle and nine other people. Staying alert and aware at all times will get you a long way in this game. Checking your left and right sides, behind you, your corners, over ridges and peaks, behind trees, rocks, and in some cases, buildings. Now, obviously, you shouldn't physically check everything as it can be unsafe, which comes back to your awareness. Knowing if someone could be in that building or not, whether you saw them or not, or the potentially that they went in there when you saw them go into a group of buildings. It's always best to assume, rather than check with your face. The safe play is always the better play. Awareness is something I can tell you to always keep in your mind, but it's also something you have to learn to do over time. Decision making. Decision making is like half of the game. You need to be able to make decisions and commit to them. You also need to be able to adjust your decisions at a moment's notice to fit the situation. Keeping that in mind will lead you to making better decisions. If you are making a decision that only has one option, it's probably not a good decision. And there are more likely other decisions that will give you multiple options. Strong decision making skills and commitment, which many of us have issues with, will lead you to success. Here is a great example that you guys have been watching for a minute now. It's about a five minute clip. I push up to this tree. Why? Well. I know that the circle is closer to me when it starts closing in, and I have more direct cover options behind this tree, and ultimately, the play that I've decided to make at this point is to hold this position no matter what, even after the circle goes past me. It's just me and him now. I'll actually have a fairly good chance of hitting the shot on him as he runs through an open field to get to that next circle position. If I don't hit the shot, I lose. If I hit the shot, I win. Thankfully, he wanted to fight before the final circle moved, and my position change had thrown him off to where to look, leading to an easy shot for me to the win. That's part of decision making, my decision to move up to that tree and change my position when he wasn't looking, knowing he had a sniper rifle as well and he was trying for the shot on me. Now, decision making leads into positioning, which is another large part of your decision making overall. Realizing good positions is something that can take a while for you to learn, but generally you want to have multiple cover options and multiple escape routes. Remember, the best decisions have multiple options for you to adapt with. After you engage in a large firefight, move. You and the person you were just fighting with shot several rounds in a closed area and made a lot of noise for everybody else to hear. Everyone else has a good general idea of where you're at, and closer players pretty much know exactly where you're at. Intelligent players are going to start pushing you with the sound of those gunshots for two reasons. One, the sound of gunshots cover any sound that they're going to make. Two, 
If they come up on you while you're fighting somebody else and they catch you and the person you're fighting both off guard, they just got two free kills. The longer the gunfight, the more you become at risk. Finish gunfights as quickly as possible, loot quickly if you absolutely must, and change positions. Looting inside the final 10 is not something you should ideally be doing. Your setup should already be pretty good from this point, and you should have the ammo to carry out the rest of the game. But, if you don't, this will transition into our final tip, your setup, and playing your setup. Your setup is going to matter a lot towards the end, obviously. No, it is not impossible to win with a bad setup like a UMP and a shotgun. I've actually done it. I have won with a micro Uzi and a shotgun. You remember that Uzi God clip? Yeah, that Uzi carried us all the way to the top 10. Now, I didn't particularly win that game, but I have won games before using just a submachine gun. So you don't need a good setup, but having a good setup certainly helps. Your setup is dependent on your playstyle. If you're not a good sniper type of person and you don't perform well with them, don't pick up sniper rifles. I would argue that you should probably learn how to play with a sniper rifle in your setup because they are extremely powerful when used correctly, but go to what you favorite, not what makes you uncomfortable. Now, in the final 10, the things you should consider about your setup are this. Do you have a decent range option? And a decent range option is any assault rifle with an ACOG. Hell, if you're a good enough shot, red dots and hollows will do the job. But you have to be able to kill somebody beyond 200 meters. Those fights will happen and killing somebody at that distance can be pivotal in deciding whether or not you get to the next position safely. Most assault rifles are good for close ranges too, in particular the AKM. Just flip to full auto so you can fill somebody with bullets. My favorite setup to run right now is an M16 silenced with an ACOG or ADEX and an AKM with a red dot always set to full auto. This gives me instant options for both long and short range. Now why an M16? That's something I'll talk about later on in a recoil video I plan to do for you. But I will also trade the M16 out for a sniper rifle as they tend to be more accurate and can one-shot most people through level 2 head armor, sure, level 3 right? if you get something like an M24 or an AWM. Having options for okay. both short and long range is important, but what is more important is playing to the range that you have the best advantage in. For instance, if I'm running an M16 with an 8x scope and a silencer, I'm not pushing anybody. I am moving with the edge of the circle, I am playing extremely passive, I am taking shots when I have them, because people don't know where I'm going to be. I'm going to pick them off at a distance. Go back to that clip, that disgusting silenced run that I had, and watch that. Four or five of my kills there towards the end, the person did not know where I was, and they died. One of them did know where I was, he shot at me first, he still died because I got lucky through, you know, shots underneath the car, but none of them come knew on, where I was. On, I always on. took the kill when I had the chance to kill, but I never chased anybody down. I never aggressively pushed anyone, I pushed for positioning and to move up with the circle, and that was it. <laughs> the same thing goes if you have a terrible loot run and all you have is a submachine gun and a shotgun. You have to try to ambush someone for a closer range fight and hopefully kill them, then take their assault rifle and their other weapons to get you more ranged options. The biggest point to this entire bit here is realizing what weapons you have and your best options with those weapons. You can't win a fight against a sniper 200 meters away when all you have is a UMP, so don't even try and force a fight up close with him. That's pretty much it guys, that's all the basic tips I can give you about how to win in the final 10. If you apply these tips to every game that you play, you will start doing better. Other videos I know that you guys want, like I said earlier, we're going to do a recoil video later on and possibly leading targets as well. If you guys do want any other videos or any tips, let me know down in the comments below. For those of you that stay to the end of the video, there will be a special something for you. I think I'll cover uh, both of those videos about recoil and leading targets separately though. Uh, hope this video was helpful to you. 
If this video was helpful to you, feel free to sub to my channel for more content like this. If you have any other tips or best practices that you feel like I left out or didn't talk about for surviving in the top 10, feel free to leave them in the comments, and if there are enough of them, I might do a version 2 of this video. If you guys want to support the channel directly, you can do so over at patreon.com forward slash three guns down, or you can buy games from my Green Man Gaming referral link that's in the description below for you guys to click. Feel free to watch all the action over at twitch.tv forward slash guns games after 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and listen to me rant on Twitter at three guns down. For those of you that stuck around through the entire sellout spiel that I had there, your little special gift is this. Every other Sunday, we give away a copy of Battlegrounds over on my Twitch channel. This Sunday, April 9th, we are giving away a copy. The next Sunday will be April 23rd. And then two weeks after that, on another Sunday, we'll give away another copy. I'm going to be giving away a copy of Battlegrounds every single weekend until I'm bored of the game or I just don't play it anymore. And I don't think that's going to happen for a really, really long time, guys. So, starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday, a copy of Battlegrounds will be given away over on the Twitch channel. I'm Guns, love your faces, that's Philip DeFranco, why am I saying that? I love you, I will see you guys out there, later. Recovering from that. Oh! <laughs> oh, I blew up the car. Look at that. <laughs>